everyone. I'm Dwayne. I'm Tom. And this is Our Recovery Life. First and foremost, thank you everyone. Um, with all the comments, with all the the topics, everything, it's been pretty awesome. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, yeah, yep. Our Recovery Life. Um, also, all the invites for uh, Our Recovery Life on Facebook has been pretty awesome. Topic tonight, uh, Michelle and Jenna had mentioned complacency, which is a really good one for me because a lot of this got started because of a little bit of complacency. Hmm. I, uh, you know, when I first got into recovery, I would go to functions and meetings almost every day. I, uh, I really put in the work. I called my sponsor every day for like the first three years, um, but somewhere along the line there with jobs and kids and getting married and all of that stuff. Uh, fun stuff. The fun stuff. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, it started to, you know, a little bit less and a little bit less uh, attendance, a little bit less phone calls. Mm. I do remember probably about the three-year mark, I was like, Oh, I'm only, I'm only going to like two meetings a week or three meetings a week. I was like, yep, here we go. This is how it starts. The bottom falling yeah, out. Yep, the, <laughs> the bottom falling out. I uh, didn't call my sponsor one day. And, uh, Let's go jump on the corner. Goes. Yeah, yeah. Might as well go jump on the corner now. Yeah, I mean, no sense uh, yeah. screwing around. But <laughs> I uh, So I kind of caught myself there. I got back into, uh, you know, a little bit better structure. Hmm. And that lasted for quite a while. But... When we uh, decided to buy a house and my wife decided to start working and, you know, we added four kids to the mix. And, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> life. Got a, got a 10-year-old and then we added uh, a new baby every every two years. So, um, there's, there's one of the babies right there. Yes, speaking <laughs> of babies. Speaking of babies. <laughs> she must have thought I called her down. Correct. So... Uh, yeah, the the whole complacency thing started to really take effect, mm. and life life just yeah. happened. And it's not like I tried on purpose, but then all of a sudden I was like, okay, like my wife and I aren't even we're talking for fifteen minutes in between me getting home and her going to work. The old high five handoff. Yeah, because yeah. day, daycare when you have three little kids is you know yeah. who can afford that? Correct. You know, and. And uh, we weren't making it to meetings because, you know, she worked in the evening and then yeah. I had the kids and baths and um, a lot of that's excuses too, oh, for sure. which is easy when you're overloaded. When you get yourself yeah. overloaded, any excuse to do any less than what you have to do yeah. uh, is, you know, a viable excuse in your yeah. head. So, so we kind of caught ourselves and we talked about it and we figured out how to get her back home mm -hmm. to be a stay-at-home mom. Um we, we started this stuff. I made a lot of goals for this year, and uh, we've been doing more meetings. We've been doing uh, more functions. We've been you know reaching out more, spending more time with our friends in recovery. Action. And so it action. sounds like you guys had a plan that knew that recovery is slipping and it's time. We're getting complacent. Like yes. we got to do an act, some action. Yeah. Okay. Um, so definitely, if there's no action, there's no recovery. Mm. That's uh, so. That, uh, that kind of is, is where we were at. The other thing with complacency that I've noticed, um, especially with people that I've hung out with, for some reason, um, three, four year mark, mm. and I've seen this happen over and over and over and over, I don't know if, if that's a spot where people start to think that they've got it under control yeah. or... But I've seen more people in that three, three and a half, four year mark decide that they can drink now, yeah, and uh, go right down the tube. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, I've a couple of that people that came in and got into recovery about the same time as me. Uh, one of them actually ended up committing suicide, and uh, another one is uh, in prison. Hmm. Uh, another one is in treatment. I mean, there's. So many people I know that thought that they yeah. could drink and then um, just didn't work out for them. And I know for me, 
Um, you know, I like to play the tape through. Uh, yes. And early recovery, I figured out my relapse is one beer, two beer, three beer, gram, and I'm gone, and you don't see me yeah. until who knows when. Correct. If if you see me again. Yeah, and that's that's the whole thing. I, I like that you brought up uh, drinking and complacency. Those two, for me, are, are very – they're linked um, just because as I do get out – and hit that uh, my first time through. Actually, um, I knew I'd never use again or do anything, you know, hard drugs because I'd went to prison and I got a a um, a consequence. So I'd right. never do that again. Yeah. Um, but I knew um, I was court ordered to kind of get into the program and uh, and, and into a support system and start doing that. So I did that. Had um, a sponsor. Um, some guy that I just you know talked to an extra two minutes with at, at the meetings just so um, I gave uh, you know my, my parole officer and those people uh, someone to call, but uh, wasn't really a so you know lip service one hundred percent and really no action. It was just kind of going and and that was enough to kind of keep me um, keep me okay. Like you were talking about, I was head right. f- what I considered at the time head first into uh, um, just never wanting to get back and, and little by little by little. Um, and and I, it's odd that you say that three year mark. I was right up there, knew that uh, I hadn't thought about drugs in a long time, and uh, and uh, alcohol was never really, you know, my problem. Um, and uh, <laughs> like we had talked about in other, you know, other episode. You oh know, yeah, because I that's when I got into recovery too. I was like, well, I got to get off the drugs so I can start drinking with my buddies, like yeah, I live used to and normal. No, again, me too, <laughs> raging alcoholic. I found yeah. out. And then the funny thing is, looking back now, I've learned that my my track record, looking at my record, uh, my criminal record, there's it's littered with alcohol. Uh, but I had hit that slippery slope that time that I thought I was okay, wasn't doing you know drugs anymore. So I, I decided that uh, that it was time that I could you know be normal again and just have a drink here and there because you know and complacency was number one thing. Stop going to meetings stopped uh, hanging around with my support system and started kind of doing that whole withdrawal that we talk about. Uh, and uh, it, it, it really was uh, the beginning of the end for me. Uh, it was no ifs, ands, or buts. And before I knew it, um, like you said, one beer, two beer, three beer, um, Graham, and I was off to the races. And uh, the bottom looked, it looked ugly. And uh, I, I, I remember very, very uh, vividly this time around i was like no uh that's where i went wrong was i got complacent and and i didn't think i needed them people right i'm doing a lot of air quotes this time yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't need them people and i wasn't like them people and that whole withdrawal that separation um that we talk about it, it was huge for me um this time I, s- some things that i notice uh, my meeting attendance i've kept that up um anytime that starts kind of getting off kilter uh, my attitude, uh, um, you know, my symptoms of the relapse start happening. People come up to me and like, Hey, is everything okay? You know, you, you talking to your, your people, you know, <laughs> that's code word for your recovery group. Uh, and, uh, you know, sponsor ask, everything's okay. I find myself being negative about everything. And, uh, you know, there's action steps that I can take and it's yeah. always back to the basics. You know, my sponsor and a lot of people with clean time always say, um, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, for uh, sure. Um, what 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 worked in the beginning still works today, you know. Just yeah, there's no need to to change it. No, no. And my whole thinking says I have a lot of time now. You know, I have this. Uh, you know, now uh, I'm in the process of, of getting getting married. So you know, I got work. I got this. I got that. All of that life on life's that life stuff. Um, all are hidden traps to put that before my recovery. Oh yeah. And as I do that. Every time we do that, um, that's just one more step closer, one more, um, you know, when you do that long enough, you're one stub, your toe away from saying the, the, the magic words, F it. Yeah, you know? just, let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, so complacency is so, so, so huge. Um, and then poof, next thing you know, you're, uh, you're in a place that I never, ever thought I'd be down here. You're in that basement like other episodes where you didn't right. take someone and you're back down there and just wanted to see an old friend, you know. Right. And next thing you know, how did I get down here and how did I? What am I doing at this bar eating an appetizer? Right. You know, why am I putting myself in these places? Um, and, and that's, you know, for me, that's what complacency looks like. I, I put myself far enough away from the people that keep putting in my head 
that um, that that this is deadly and this is, wants to kill me, um, and I can't run from the stuff up here. So I need to uh, keep doing what worked day one. Right. It works day two. Yeah. Ten. Two million. It doesn't matter. Clean time does not equal healthy and okay and um. You know, it it Return. doesn't mean that you're, you're you're recovered. Like, and once I kind of got that in my head, I realized that I just got to make this my life. And and you know, there, there's periods, the ebb and flow of meeting attendance and things like that. But right. um, it's kind of like the saying: it's uh, doesn't matter how much time you have in recovery; it's how much recovery you have in your time. That's and and life is going to happen. Let's just not be two steps about it. The longer you're doing things, good things are going to come. You're going to get you know the stuff. You know, oh, yeah. jobs and, you know, you work on second house and, you know, that stuff happens. But yep. um, so what are some forms of complacency that you've seen with yourself and other people that you could kind of give us? Uh, one that's a really big red flag for me both ways is if somebody's like, uh, you know, hey, you haven't been been to meetings. Mm. And there was a time in my recovery where I was like, oh, yeah, well, Sunday night works for me. So I don't don't see you, you know, which mm-hmm. didn't really cause a red flag. But mm-hmm. When I was like, well, no, I'm going to, I, uh, uh, <laughs> Tuesday angry? before lat, uh, I'm going to meetings. All right. Yeah. Like I'm okay. So like, that anger, when you start to get defensive mm-hmm. and angry or somebody's getting in defensive and angry, that's a red flag for me. Yeah. You know, cause then all of a sudden you're trying to, you know, it's just how it works. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the whole setup in the brain no, I for totally, it, but it, that's, that's what happens. What, uh, what about, uh, the withdrawing we talked about? Oh yeah, definitely. That's uh, a lot. Like that's what happened to me. I I just stopped reaching out, stopped calling, uh, slowed my meetings way down, um, and and gave myself that. Well, I went to a meeting three weeks ago, yeah. so you know. Well, I went to a meeting four weeks ago. Well, mm-hmm. and just eventually, like I said before, it just all of a sudden was like I. This is not going the way it's supposed yeah. to go. You know, and I. I really don't want to do this again. No. It was uh, a place I never want to go to again. So. And what about um, other, like other forms of, of, you know, the whole moving stuff around and shape-shifting as far as, like, drugs and things like that? What do you see with that? Oh, um, well, like it transfers. Yes. Uh, or cross-addicting, I guess you could 100%. say. 100%. Um, gambling. Mm. Um, there's a million. Gambling, sleeping, sex. Uh, that's my shopping. Favorite. Oh, sex is your favorite. <laughs> yeah, eating is mine. <laughs> yes, and it's crazy how it shape shifts. Like, like oh, yeah. it, it just, uh, you know, sleeping and depression and just not doing anything, laziness, like just letting everything. And and I think a lot of those things are are the the inner addict kind of slowly taking control again right. and. and uh, and one step closer to the proverbial, you know, the the, the relapse. Right. Um, let's see here. Uh, what about uh, communication? You know. Yeah, you get uh, communication breakdown too, mm. um, and secrets. Mm. You know, not big ones, but little ones like, "Oh, hey, how are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh no, everything's good." When really everything's not so good. But I've got this much clean time, and so I am shouldn't feel like this so i gotta be an example or yeah that's a horrible example to be you know? <laughs> correct um whether you have two minutes or 20 years if you got something on your mind you need to take care of that otherwise it's gonna fester and come back back to get you and and the whole going and just being the 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 golden star recovery person and and not saying i'm falling apart you know i, right. I haven't been to a meeting in a really long time um it, it's funny how once you miss a few, that just snowballs. And oh, next you know absolutely. you haven't been yeah, for a just... while. And like what happened. And then the attitude, the anger, um, not grateful about anything. All the stuff that you prayed for that you have now, you're like, God, it's, you know. Right. It's all, all of a the, sudden not enough. It's not enough. And then the, the comparing. The comparing is a huge, huge thing. And uh, and next thing you know, you know you're sitting on Relapse's doorstep. And, right. Um, I think that's where you hit it earlier that uh, that's when an action step needs to happen, like a plan, like, all right, um, you know, reach out, call someone, say, hey, I haven't been to a meeting in a while. I need you. Um, you know, get online, say, hey, this is what's going on and right. ask for help. Like whatever that looks like to you, um, definitely, definitely um, 
reach out and do it. Um, so thank you all. Like th- this has been um, this an amazing is, journey. Yeah, and uh, it definitely has filled my cup uh, so many times, especially with uh, the Facebook group. Um, you, t- you know, everyone inviting people and that kind of getting big. Um, also, the YouTube channel. Um, please go subscribe, like, and uh, and just remember, fight the good fight. And keep it clean. Oh, my God.